I, I tell people if you give me a word, I'm gonna give you a poem. And I'm I am gonna do that. But before I do that, I got I feel personally like I gotta do one just about that one. I don't know why. I feel like that's what y'all did to me. Okay. <laughs> now, y'all poured that into me, so now I gotta pour that out. Can I pour that out, y'all? Okay. Sure. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and try to pour that out a little bit. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, like, to be real, she was just trying to paint the nails, but there was so many times that it was swirling around her mind about everything that was supposed to be a success and everything that they called to fail. I mean, she was just trying to lay there and mind her own business. But I feel like her phone kept going off with somebody who just wanted to bear witness. I mean, but most likely he was witness, therefore she couldn't understand why he was thought when he was worthy to bear witness. See, she was just trying to paint her nails and at the same time clear her mind, but she couldn't even seem to find whatever that design was that she was supposed to hold on to at the time. Fine. See, she was just trying to paint with inside the lines. You know, make sure that she could do what she had to do while staying inside the beautiful. But at that same time, her mind was still having to maneuver through everything that they were telling her that she was supposed to be when she is who she is, and that's just the truth to you. See, I want you to know that while she was just trying to lay there and mind her own business, she was probably sitting there tired of people minding her own business. That's when it gets hard, and that whole relaxation part is what she's trying to make sure that she can feel, because internally she knows that she's gifted. She just wanted to relax and lay and release. She just wants the drama to cease. That's why she wants to paint in peace. See, she just wants to lay there and paint her nails because she knows that life is so real that this moment is not a drill and she knows that self-care is something that only feels like it comes with despair. Therefore, she doesn't seem to grip it enough even though she knows that it's there. So she's gonna take this time right here to paint them nails. Oh. <laughs> Right. What? Y'all know what it is. It's your boy, G Dash Jones. Okay. And it's hats off, people. You already know what it is. Oh man. This week's episode of Hats Off. Oh, we're gonna talk to Nataki Oliver. She's gonna tell us about the soft girl era. The soft girl era, y'all. We're gonna talk about it. Listen, but first of all, first and foremost, before I even get to the topic, because I'm going to bring her up here, we're going to have a great conversation. But first, I, I got to let you know, if you haven't peeped the Hats Off mixtape, check out that playlist. Listen, the link is in the bio for the link tree, or check out the link here. Everybody like new music till it's time to hear new music. It got all local artists and not commercialized music. Listen, it's going to get your bop on. Uh, 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 uh. Listen, that's the Hats Off playlist. It's available on Spotify, Tidal, YouTube. I got everybody from uh, Briz, uh, Broken Home is on here, I blew Tulip. Listen, it's a whole vibe. Again, so check the link in my bio or when I, whenever this is posted, the link will be down there somewhere or whatever. But check it out because that has all playlist. Mm, fire. Mwah, magnifique. So, but I, I need y'all to check that out also, right? If y'all don't know, I got to give a shout out to everybody who came out to that open mic jam session last night because it was a vibe with, with Tay's music and, 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 oh man, listen, I was on the stage. I took them through old Negro spirituals. What? Yeah, I took up the old Negro spirituals. There's a whole performance I put together. Listen, I'm gonna talk to y'all about. I, I, I might, I might repost that. I got that somewhere. Y'all might, y'all might get a little, little bit sliver of that performance. I'm gonna post that at some point. But that open mic jam session was fire. Um, so shouts out to everybody who came out. Amp Dan was in the room. I was trying. Amp Dan was gonna get on the mic. Aziza just sang, and Aziza walks off, the, walks off when she sings. I don't know if y'all know, but Aziza just she bellows and then she just go. You be like, yo, how did the vocals do that? She did that. Shouts out to Latoya Marie. She 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 bellowed too. Listen, everybody was fire on that stage. It, it was it was a, just a phenomenal effort. Um, again, so if y'all missed it, for the first Wednesday every month, um, uh, man. It's, it's, it's a vibe, all right? Um, and by the way, this Friday, if you got bars, come on out to the Oddity Bar, because they doing the BBB. I got I got Debt to General. I really, listen, I remember Debt to General. He's going to be on the mic. It, it's, it's a couple of them on that mic, but I just remember, yeah, I mean, that's my man. Uh, D. Harv is hosting, as always, it's the R.I.S.P. Peace Spin Edition. So I just had to shout that situation out. Uh, that's at the Oddity Bar, the BBB situation. It's a vibe. All right, now, uh, without further ado, right, to open up this episode of Hats Off, um, I, I got to bring up uh, the phenomenal, the amazing, right, the gorgeous uh, art curator. Mm -hmm. That's right. She does that. She does that. Uh, the sole firm owner, 
Mm -hmm. She one of those too. She 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 she, she does that as well. Um, and also uh, she is a Delaware architect of the soft girl era. What? Yes, girl era. With that said, without further ado, I need to introduce you, Nataki Oliver. Oh, listen. What? Oh, look. Hey. Oh, man. Ain't no music playing, but it's a vibe. You feel me? Oh, listen. How are you? Oh, oh good, Jay. Good. How are you? Save lives and get money. Okay. <laughs> Every day. I, 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 I do got to start off because I was thinking about this, right? I feel like. Um, you being one of the leaders of the soft girl movement, soft girl era movement, you should be able to put in a word to Beyonce about them tickets. Like, I feel, I feel like you got the pull, okay? Wow. You... <laughs> I wish. <laughs> cozy. Uh, 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 cozy, come on. I'm on the list. I, listen, I, this will be my fourth Beyonce concert. I can't miss none. Which okay, real quick, what was your favorite one so far? Formation. Ooh, ooh, I can see it. I can see it. See, all I seen up from Formation was at the Super Bowl. She came out like Rambo, and they hit the. Mm, mm, crazy. Mm. So I, I <laughs> was that what the show was like? The show was crazy. Everything about it, like her artistry, is just it's next level, man. And to be honest with you, people talk about these ticket prices, and they're not even that high. It's it's a lot of third party, you know, sites and fake accounts and it's not even that. The highest one I seen was twenty three hundred and you're on the stage with her. Other than that, you can get a ticket for one fifty, so yeah. But yes, I'll be in the building. All right, listen, I'm 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 gonna clap up for you. Matter of fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little day. I'm gonna ah ah just for you <laughs> when it happens. <laughs> you know <what> that <laughs> All right, so um, just what? Wait, because we just started talking. Just tell the world about yourself. Let let the world know who you are, what you do. Tell them. All right. So he's already introduced me. My name is Nasaki Oliver. Born and raised in Wilmington. Um, background has always been in art and design. That's what I went to school for. Graduated from FIT in New York with that. But I was actually into it as a young child. Like people was watching cartoons. I was watching Elsa Clinch style on TV at nine and ten years old. So. Yeah, so when I went to New York and studied, they take, it's intense, and that's like the Harvard of fashion, FIT. And once I left there, I came back during a recession, lost the job up there, everybody was losing jobs and everything. So I came back to Delaware, and I realized I had to bring what I learned, what I gravitated to, which was, I, I learned more of art. It was not just about fashion, it was the history of art and conservation and stuff like that curation and I learned all that type of stuff there and so when I came back of course you're not in golf like that in here I came back in 09 it wasn't here it just really wasn't it was two institutions it was Delaware Art Museum the contemporary and that was it so I came back and I started like working uh, I have a, des a design degree in jewelry and I also have a international international trade and marketing degree so I have dual stuff right and when I came back, I started making jewelry. I did pretty good. When I went to like different jewelry stores, not the mall, but real life crafts, they wouldn't give me a shot. So it was like, yeah. So I don't know if it was, you know, this beautiful brown melanin. I don't know what it was, but I couldn't get a shot like when I was in New York. It was like, you go to New York, it's like, oh, FIT, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you got the credentials, you got the skill, we got you. So um, I just started working, 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 but I just knew that there was something that I was missing. And so I started using art and fashion on my Instagram page. I started comparing it to a lot. And when I started doing that, people that were watching me started gravitating and asking questions and we started having conversations around how the, this thing over here is similar to art. They're, they got similarities, you know, like similarities there. So once I started doing that a lot, it then turned into, I started getting requests for different jobs. And I started getting nervous. Gee, I was just like, oh, okay. Like, I asked God for this, but now, like, I got to, you know, I got to walk in that path. 
So I started manifesting to myself in little voices about what I'm gonna do when I retire. I'm gonna be an art gallery owner. I'm gonna be a, a curator. I'm gonna be an um, art dealer. I start saying this stuff. As now, be and be be really, I'm be really clear. I have a full time job at Bank of America still, even then. But I kept saying this to myself. So when I doing all these things and manifesting, it started turning into artists reaching out to me and saying, Talk, I need your help. The first artist was Seven God. When right. Seven God, before he had one show, he called me, we related, we cousins. He was like, Talk, come, you know, look at all, all this artwork I got. I don't know what to do with it. He was, you know, he just was creating and I'm like, I'm over there. And I was like, okay, you want to sign. So I told him, I was like, listen, how much are you charging? I'll buy your first piece. He didn't know, he didn't know what to do. I was like, okay, this is whatever your price you tell me, I'm going to buy it. But once I tell you this price, you can't go any lower because that is now setting the bar for how you want to go. So that night I bought three pieces. After that, I started curating shows. His show was my first. Um, James Wyatt was my second. Seven guys sold out that show. Um, he sold his biggest piece at the time, that show. Then it was James Wyatt, and we did something with the 76ers. Um, I don't know what their name was at that time. It wasn't Blue Coast. It was a different name. And so we, you know, I was, you know, making connections and bringing them together. And then it, then it turned into this and that. And then I realized, okay, now I have, um, now I'm getting my feet wet. Then it started, then I, you know, had a website. Then... Well, I'm in a soul firm now. This wasn't supposed to happen at that time. This was put into my lap. My son, my son had a business called Mr. Lemonade. And so he used to be in this space. The owners of this space, seeing what I was doing by Nisaki, this space is empty. Do you want to do I'm like, well, shoot, I ain't, this wasn't on the plan, but let me walk into it. So when I walked into it, at that point, I had reached out to... Um, I was volunteering at the Delaware Contemporary because I'm always about learning. I'm like, I don't have all the answers. So I will volunteer and learn and all that type of stuff. So then when I was down there, I realized they weren't respecting black artists or artists of color. So that kind of happened around the same time. And then when the soul, when I was like, okay, I got this opportunity for the soul firm. Now I got a space. I can, I can have anybody I want to hear. I can curate it any way I want to. I don't have to live by the constraints of what has been given to the Black artists. Now I have a platform. And it ain't just about Black artists because I have artists that have all kinds of, you know, I'm really specific on who comes in here, but the opportunity is available. If they come with the, you know, with the, 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 same, the same category as if you was going to go to these spaces, but I'm not going to block you out. You know what I'm saying? I'm going I'm to work with you if you don't have all the things. So... That's how the Soul Firm came about. And since then, I was, this is my fifth year. This is my fifth year. It's my fifth year. Um, so, you know, I have two exhibits. The last part of this year, which is Erica Jones and Shante Young Williams. They both have individual uh, solo shows. And be between then and now and then, I gave myself space to work on projects which is a teen art space at nine. It's our second year doing that. Um, I'm working with the Delaware Contemporary because now they have come around and realized that Black artists here, we top notch. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> they got, we got talent here. So I've seen a shift in them and we have built a better connection, um, just working, a working relationship. And I'm actually working on a project with them that's going to drop this summer. So these, this six months is for me to work on projects, have pop-ups at the gallery, the paint night that's coming next Saturday with Erica Jones on the website. And then I was able to groom myself into a soft girl. Okay, I'm going to pause you right there. Because I was looking around and all I saw was gems. They were just gems, 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 gems. So, okay, and, and what I love to do on my show, while I tip my hat to you, I like to make sure that the audience can kind of pick up some of these gems. <laughs> one of the biggest, I'm a, one of the first gems you said, I don't even know if you caught it, was you wanted this thing 
thing, right? You you, you came, you, excuse me, you worked hard. You got more degrees than Bruce Lee, right? You was out there just getting, you was out there just learning, getting your fashion on, killing it, right? Bound, then you come here and, and it's not respected. But the thing that stuck out to me was when it wasn't respected and then you getting your nine to five on, right? You still forged through. And what you did was you said you were going, you, you, you was going to manifest what you wanted. Right, that that was the thing. But what made it interesting is you got you got a little nervous because they started coming in. But and what makes that interesting to me is sometimes you forget who you are in life because you went through all that other stuff. You already was there. You was already dope. But because the rejection kind of knocked you down a little bit, you was like, I don't even know. And then, then the offers start coming. You had to remind yourself who you are. Right. You had to start manifesting that next future of who you wanted to be. Right. And and, and I, I I had to pull that out because that's one of those things where people don't get. Yeah, you might get knocked down for a while, but as long as you remember who you are, you bring that self right back through. You kind of start moving through and, and, and making making moves. So I had to highlight that moment and did and, and it ties to the other dope part that you said. You you said this is crazy. What you said was you said then, then pretty much the soul firm came about, but the, you already said you wanted to retire and have an art gallery. You was so when you when you told the story, you was like, and that wasn't a part of the plan. Yes, it was. It was, it was already it wasn't was, part of the plan. Oh, my plan. It was God's plan. What? What? So why, where Drake at? Drizzy, he right? <laughs> listen, God's plan. Hey, okay. That listen, I'm here for it. I'm just saying, like, to me, those things are like not only like motivational and inspirational but people go through that and, and and people go through go through years to get degrees and all that paperwork and stuff and then when it don't work in that fashion they be like all right yeah. and, and and they give up and they quit and sometimes you got to just keep on moving because you'll get there you gotta pivot, you gotta pivot. Mm, yeah. facts so now 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 we're at this soft girl era right yep. you you became a soft tell tell them what, what is a soft girl okay so we're going to rewind. Mm -hmm. Soft Girl came out in the 90s. Mm. Soft Girl Life is what it came about. So in that era, it was uh, white girls. We're going to think of like Clueless. Clueless was a big example of Soft Girl Life at the time. They wore pink. They wore frilly things and um, cutesy stuff. The women that we identify with well we identified it with them because they were black however for me i didn't relate to them which was hillary banks she was considered would be like soft girl okay. and also um whitney gilbert of um mm -hmm. uh, a different world right so put that into like an image uh i come from the hood and <clears throat> i was taught to be you got you got to take a blow you got to give a blow. Um, you got to learn to talk slick, quick, move fast. Your, your skin got to be tougher. Be aggressive. And there was nothing soft about that. We're in survival mode, always. Always in survival mode. And so, to be honest with you, I, you know, it's nothing I could relate to. Also, being a single mom, raised a son, he's going to be 21. So, I raised a human young boy to a man for 21 years it takes a lot of grit to do that you know so you got to be the enforcer and the nurture nurture it's a borderline you can't kind of be weak about it so moving forward and i have a like i i cuss a lot and i've gotten better with it so what i realized that last year last year is when i tapped into soft girl life soft girl when I found out it really about it, to be honest with you, it was, uh, I was in a relationship and it ended, right? And when I started tapping into like, first I was like, oh, da, 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 that, da, 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 you know. So then when I look back into it, I realized that my communication was harsh, right? And... I started, it was around the time I started, I heard about soft girl life a little bit. I think that was like maybe May or June, something like that. And so um, when I started reading up about it, I'm like, oh, what's this, you know, reading up about it. But what I, what I heard when I, when I did my research at the time, it was saying that black women were tapping into this soft girl life. And that white women 
have been groomed to be fragile. Well, not fragile, but delicate and soft. And, you know, take their feelings to be more fragile. Where ours is, you got to be strong. You got to deal with, you got to have the world in your back. You, this is how you're supposed to be. And I communication, not really knowing it can be aggressive or rough. So I start thinking like, okay, I may need to change a couple of things, right? And so I, start, I started with going back to that man and saying, I'm going to apologize for my part in the process because my aggressive communication, I could have got what I wanted out of the situation without being at. And I started thinking, okay, I need to soften my communication. Then I spoke to my son. And he was a big factor in me rethinking as well. So I asked him, he had said something to me, G. He said something to me like in 2021. And he was like, um, jokingly, he was like, yeah, my mom was telling my, telling my, my peoples and my boys, like, when my mom, when my mom come at you and she cuss you out, you feel it. He was like, she'll, she'll crush you, right? So I was kind of like, ha, 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 ha. You know, so then when I'm trying to like, I'm start thinking about it, I'm like, okay, he live with me every day. Okay, it's something to this. So the first step was apologizing for my part in the way I communicated. And then it was, now you have to not only just, not just that situation, you got to pull back, like, how, how often you cuss. Like, your cussing is outrageous. You have to start listening before you, ah, you know what I'm saying? Then... There's a way to get what you want out of, out, out of any conversation without bringing a hood to everything. Once I started doing more and more and more research, and I'm like, okay, not only is it just communication, right? But I want to live a little less drama free, you know, you know um, a little bit more stress free. I'm a person, I know how to say no. But it was also, how do you say no? You know, is it, do you got to say no? Or that's not going to work for me. Like they say, you can get somebody else to do it. You feel me? So it was just, that was the starting point to me recognizing that I need to learn how to live a softer life. And soft girl air is going to benefit you. And it's not about being timid. That was never what it was was about it's not about being timid or you can't be strong you could still be a strong woman like period you could be a strong woman um it's just the way that like different i'm doing it as more of a communication but it's taking on other things like even um even like when i did that trip i went on a solo trip for the first time what was stressing me out was that other people that was supposed to go on that trip was pulling back and it was stressing me out and i said Hold on, hold on, soft girl. Call that travel agent, tell her you're gonna go solo and you want a VIP up, up, upgrade everything. And I didn't, and that was my first solo trip, and it was amazing. So it was little things like that, changing your whole thought process on the way that we move as black women for ourselves. And that once I started doing that, I started sharing it, sharing it with you know people. I actually, it's just so crazy because like when we talk and like when me, me and different people, females, we talk anymore, we just be like, hey, soft girl, just like, it's like, you know, him, you know what I'm saying? What's up, girl? It's like, hey, soft girl. And we start to, once you, well, for me, when I started really thinking about it and putting that first in my mind before I do things or did things, it started coming across a little bit easier for me. And people started picking up, oh, you move, you know, they picking up on little, little things I'm doing and I don't realize it, but it has really benefited me. And so when I started doing it, I started sharing it with other people on social media, just trying to, you know, put the fillers out there. Who's, you know, who's living like this? And some women are like, I met one woman so far who said she was, a black woman said she was raised to be soft. She's the only one. And I'm like... Oh, you rare. <laughs> but I asked her, like, what does that mean? She was just like, you know, she knows how to turn it on. Her father said that she's delicate. 
and she's the prize. And those are the type of things that she was groomed on. So it's like, mm -hmm. it's something that we got to start. Once we learn about it, we definitely have to tap into it. And I'm hoping that young girls, I'm, I'm hoping that somebody that I'm, you know, close to, we can work with the young girls to start it earlier. You know what I'm saying? Like, even the fight that I seen a couple of weeks ago, somebody was throwing a, a party here, mm -hmm. a big party, right? Mm -hmm. We didn't know I seen it, right? And I'm looking at that video and I'm thinking like, damn, that could have been me in my 20s. Mm -hmm. Right? But now, if somebody had told them like, if they had that whole soft girl life, they would have been like, oh girl, I'm not doing that. I look, I look too good. I'm too fly. I don't got time for that stress. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. now, um, talking to other women and we're, you know, we, it's like a community of us and we're communicating and we're coming out. I have the, you know, the, the, the happy hour every Monday and Friday, usually Mondays, if they let me, they, they know they're going to come out. We go, we go to Deco. We got a soft girl, Eric Martini over there. We sip it. We talk. Yeah. Mm. It's fire. It's fire. Hey. <laughs> And so we sit there, we talk. Let this Monday somebody came through and they just they got emotional and started crying because they see they see the change in themselves and they appreciative that we all are like trying to figure this thing out together. And we're trying to be softer in different ways. Um, acceptance, you know, being softer in the acceptance of certain things. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um, when we did the photo shoot with, with Jet, that got emotional. It was emotional. Everybody had a different reason why they were there and it was super emotional but it was cleansing um we cheered each other on and everybody in that video is a black woman who has did who are like business women in delaware you know what i'm saying like we're all connected to different parts of delaware and we're all doing successful things so for me it is us just learning how to change change how we move and i feel mm. like we've been slighted as black women going back to slavery the white woman was in the house they had the best clothes they could they could do whatever they wanted to do we had to sleep on floors we had to live in shacks we had to be rough and tough and all that type of stuff but can you imagine if harriet Tubman was able to be soft can you imagine it Ooh. if she was allowed to be soft she would have took that with the drop of a dime Facts. But she couldn't, you know, she wasn't allowed that, but I guarantee you, she would have wanted to be soft. So, so at this point, I'm hoping that we in Delaware, like I'm going to be, like I told you, I didn't create it. I didn't create it. However, in Delaware, you know, we always get things late and I feel like we on, we're so, it, I think I, I think around last summer is when I peaked it on TikTok, I think. So we early in this. I just seen Super, Super who's who owns Crayon Case. She just posted today. Her best friend bought her a Tesla. She said, and I am get, I told him I'm getting rid of all my big uh rough, tough cars. I just wanna be live a soft girl era. Living a soft girl. Mm. So it's uh it's good for us here. And we have a trip. Soft Girl Air trip that's coming in July to go see. Hold, oh. hold on, hold on, one second. We, <laughs> we we gonna we we gonna get to the experience. I told you, I told you, I like to I I, I like to take in some of the gems. Now nah. I got I gotta okay. gotta take in some of the because because here's what you said, right? Because you said some some, some, some some fire, right? And, and I be and I be thinking about some of the stuff. What people don't understand, right? There's a difference between soft or should I say, excuse me? There's a difference between being weak or strong versus being soft or hard right like like that's one of them things so you kind of lean into that soft girl situation it has nothing to do with strength or weakness it has everything to do with not having to be so hard about how you manage your day to day yeah. right and that right there is just is super difficult <laughs> like I, I get it especially when you're and, and this is just my opinion growing up in the hood sometimes we're groomed now, like, where, where women are groomed to be hard, men are groomed to be hard, too, in a different way, but groomed almost to a point in which, like, I, as a trainer, I've had to, I, I've had to train people in corporate environments where I had to tell people why they're smiling. They're like, why are everybody so happy around here? 
And, that, and that's how they look at me. I'm like, yo, bro, you at work. It's cool. Like, it's not that bad. Like, you good. Like, I don't know. They smiling at me. What they want? Like, if you're like, yo, fam. Okay. But the environment makes you that way, right? And then I can only, I, I can't imagine, even as a female, having to deal with all of the, the, I don't know another way to word it besides oppression, right? Because you, you, you was out the hood all the way up fashion school in New York, and you still kind of had to move a certain way just to, just to maintain, right? I, and I, I felt like that was heavy. Like, I felt like it was so heavy. And, and you might not have knew how heavy it was until you started leaning into that soft girl situation. And you're like, oh, wait, I can breathe a little bit more. And start yeah. opening up, though, open up that, that, that room for yeah. you. Um, I, I do have to ask, just because I'm curious. So uh, what's one of the hardest parts about kind of adapting to this soft girl life? It's definitely been cursing. <laughs> cursing has been the hardest. Uh, my grandmother, my great grandmother, she cursed like a sailor. I mean, it wasn't nothing, you know. Um, okay, but I'm gonna tell. You, so it's just it, it has def that has definitely been hard. But I'm gonna tell you what was the reminder that I have control over that. Right now, G, every other word, as I would get comfortable, I would be flipping a word, cuss word, right? Um, but somebody who I was talking to about soft girl, I work in corporate America, and me and her was at work, and I'm talking to her about it, and she, I was talking to her about cussing. This was probably like, it was in December. Maybe no, maybe November. I'm like talking about her about custom, you know, self girl. Like, she was like, you could turn that off. So I was like, well, how do you turn it off? She said, for me, she said, I don't cuss around men. I said, huh? <laughs> like, what you mean? She said, that's how I soften up. She said, when I am around a man that I really, you know, I'm dating or you know, really comfortable with, she said. I turn it off. She said, but when, when I'm with my girl, she said, oh, we, da, 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 da. she said, but I'm not, she said, it, it softens me. She said, think about Nataki, you're not on emails cussing at your boss. Well, not my boss, I'm not on my boss, but, you know, manager. She said, you're not on email. I said, you know what? I can turn this ish off, right? <laughs> so I, um, I started being more conscious of it. I really, really really had like even even talking around my son it is it has I have calmed it down a whole lot that has been the hardest thing for me it really really was it really is still is um but she made me realize and I don't I don't do I don't do it you know around just men I realized I had to I got to reverse that all the time in order to slow it down because that's all, like, my great-grandmother was, uh, not even her, was 14, she had 14 siblings, and they was rough, 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 so that's all we knew, like, it wasn't nothing to be called a B, like, it was nothing, you know what I'm saying, so that has been the hardest thing for me, so far, so far, it's a journey, like I said, it's not just a hashtag, it's, it's definitely been a way of life, and so that has been the hardest thing so far. Wow. Even in my post, wow. I have learned to like not even communicate on social media when I'm typing, saying, you know, little customers. I've learned to even slow that. That's how far I'm trying to take this, like really changing some things. You, you know, I, I, I believe, I believe your favorite song, not your favorite song, but I feel like you knew all the words to Bodak Yellow. You just wake, wake up in the morning like, stupid, mm, you can't mess with me if you want it. That was just, <laughs> like, you was just, like, they ain't know what to do with you. She was ready. She had the red bottle, slopping them out. Listen. <laughs> There's some people who are so glad that you, that, that you go into the soft area and you know, crack the head or two before. And now, <laughs> they done learned the hard way. <laughs> but I will say this. I still have to make sure that people understand don't play with me. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the that's the Yeah. You know. Elaborate. We need to know. They they need to know that because I I promise you, so one of the things in speak from being a black man, not a black woman, but one of the things 
when you develop a little versatility or for a black man, sometimes when you develop a smile, <laughs> um, it's, it's automatically like the stigma, like, like you can be played with. Right. But there's a line there. It, it, there's a, there, hey, it's just because you a soft girl don't mean you meant to be played with. Right. So how do you show that line without having to get out of the vibe? It's getting real, real creative, Jay. <laughs> It's been real creative. Um, I'll give you an example. At work. I'll give you an example from work, right? That's right. So soft with strong boundaries. Absolutely. So it's a it's a it's a, a person at my job, right? She's always been a little shady, right? And when I first started working there, I was a type of, like checking her, like Per my email, you feel me? <laughs> so, um, but doing those type of things, it always turned back to the angry black woman. You know, you know how that go. Well, angry black man, so you know how that whole stigma goes. So what um, happened maybe like, like a, maybe like two months ago, right? She, she doesn't work in the office on a regular basis. So she came into the office and she spoke to everybody on a row except me. I peeped it. So I was like, okay. okay. I'm like, well maybe, you know, maybe I maybe I didn't look like I was here today. Anyway. So then we had a, a holiday event and she's like, oh hey. And I'm just like, oh hey. But I'm thinking to myself, you just wasn't speaking to me when I just seen you, right? But keeping it cool. So recently she had to come back into the office. She did the same thing, right? Now, mind you, I spoke to my manager about it. She did the same thing this time. So my manager said, that's, that's, yeah. you want me to say something to her? I said, no, you don't got to say nothing to her. Are you going to say something to her? Mm -mm, I'm not going to say nothing to her. I said, I'm a, but I'm going to be respectful. She said, she said, so when you see her, what you want? She said, when you see her, you're not going to speak. I said, I'm not going to make it my business to speak. I said, but if she, she just so happens to come my way, I'll give her a nod. So, ordinarily, G, I probably would have went to her and be like, oh, you're not speaking today? Like, what's up with you? That's what my manager was expecting me to be. Kept it cool. She finally came down and spoke. I said, you know, I'm having a good day. She was like, okay, I just thought I was come say hi. I said, enjoy your ride back home. So, little things like that, that would have irritated me and probably would have set me off. Or, you know, made me little, uh, I don't even care. Stress-free, drama-free, soft girl life. Facts. <laughs> Yo, somebody put that on the shirt. Stress-free, drama-free, soft girl life. Ain't nobody behind me, but it felt like I they could talk to people. So. <laughs> That's a fact. Yo, but I, I do love that because they're, they're, it, it's almost, people don't realize how empowering it can be to let things go. And move on from from, from the negativity. That's that's what it sounds like. You just release that negativity. Like, all right, apparently that's her stuff. You're good over here, and not feeding into it. So, so that 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 that, that asked me about this this soft girl experience that you curate, that you build, and kind of is live, living in. What is that like? What what is that going to be like? Tell us. Is this you talking about the uh, the trip? All of, whatever you got, but yes. Okay. <laughs> so, to be honest with you. It's so fresh and so new that right now it's just trying to build a community of black women. And not only black women, because there's been there's a woman who's not black. She is she's wants to be a part. I'm like, that's fine. I ain't excluding you, you know, come on, say whatever, you know. But the most part of it is building a community of black women that um, are ready to, you know, may not be ready to do extreme changes, but little teeny things. You know, I have somebody who just was, did, couldn't get out of just coming out the house. And she came to her first happy hour and she was like, it was just great. It was just great just to, to get out and have my me time. Like even just having me time, you know, just the little things. So right now it's just building a community. And then okay. um, like what's going to end up happening i'm going to utilize a soul firm of course so it'll be like soft girl saturdays where women can have pop-ups here black women can have pop-ups here not just black women but you know i'll keep saying black women because i want us to tap in tap in um then the owner of books and bagels 
Ellen. <laughs> Shouts out to Ellen, Books and Bagels. If you ain't got a book from Books and Bagels, you ain't got a book. Go ahead and see some. So Ellen, me and Ellen talked about having a Black Girl Era book club. It's going to be book clubbing. Um, then it is, of course, the trip in July. And just every week, if we could, oh, so then, so one of the things I did was the women who are, I consider them soft girls are like just on this journey, right? They all have text, uh, a number that I have dedicated to it. And they text the number and I send out updates, exclusive updates, uh, encouraging words. It's about 30 of them, 35 of them so far. And I send that out to them like weekly basis, letting them know what's going on, little updates, little things like that. Even on the Soft Girl Era page, I'm now going to start highlighting women um, who are soft girls. So just trying to keep this going and who knows where it's going to go, G. I, I don't have the sky's a limit at this point. Like it is the, it's, it's, there is no sky, you know. But for right now, let's just get the foundation of if, you know, I think I put something up a couple of weeks ago, like, what's your favorite perfume? Like, all those type of things that keeps us feeling beautiful and soft and delicate and all those type of things. Just want to keep pumping that out so that we can understand, like, we're not in this alone. Breathing techniques. I see Anchor, um, Anchor Healing Space on here, which is Kanye. She had a good post, and I shared it. It was about a 28-day challenge of morning and evening of breathing and getting up earlier, an hour earlier, and, you know, prayer and meditation, just really quick things to do in the morning and the evening, just to ground ourselves, you know, so I started that this week. It's just little things like that to trying to keep us, keep us soft in our mindset. It's really about a mind, a mindset type of situation. You could wear black and be soft. You know what I'm saying? It ain't about you gotta wear a pink and frilly. Nah, it's really about a mindset, I believe. And I feel that once you are moving in that direction, people gravitate to it and they 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 communicate with you different. They respect you a little bit different than when you were not as soft mentally. Yeah. Absolutely. I, so I mean that's just a lot of law of attraction, honestly. Um, because you you start to put that energy out and then that's it's what it's what comes back to you. Uh, and, and it's interesting to me because I, I and maybe I'm wrong, but what I think society can make black women hard and then it gets to that point where they don't necessarily where men treat them hard. Right. And, and now we're getting into this cycle of foolishness of now, you know, now we ain't holding the doors. We ain't carrying the bags. Oh, all right. Well, she said she got it. Then. Now she good. <laughs> like, no, like, bro, that's a lady over there. Fam. Like, like, it's, it's that thing that kind of. Yes. Right. Handle with care. Right. That that should matter to all of us. Right. So I'm, I'm I'm with you. By the way, just to recap some of the experiences, they got the the the, the deco. Right. That's Mondays for the little sippy sip. Bang bang. Got you. Get your mar mar martini. Yep. Off. Happy hour, and then we there till ten o'clock. We got a soft girl air martini. Uh, usually Mondays, but Fridays as well. Right. Boom. It's going to be the soft girls, uh, small business Saturday. That's coming. Boom. Right. Going to have to get the businesses gyrating. Okay. <laughs> then not to, not, not to mention the books and bagels situation coming for the book club, by the way, if you can get Ellen to do book reviews, yep. cause she's, she knows all the books. I need Ellen to just, start. she can do black girl book reviews, but she needs to be doing book reviews. Anyway, so we are you going to get the book club popping? And that's not even counting the trip. We ain't talking about planes or nothing yet, but it's all, or, 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 or boats, whatever's going to be getting people okay, moving together. Right. And, and encouraging text, encouraging conversation. Like it's just kind of all getting a mindset in unison. Now, I do have to ask this question. What made you not only, like, like after you embodied it, what made you want to lead it? Like, like gather other women to, like, be a part of that space. Because nobody else is doing it. I'm all for, like, just do it. You know, like, that's how, I, that's how I've been able to, if everybody going left, I've always been right. It's just how I've always been, even... Even when I wasn't soft, even when I was young in the hood, didn't matter if everybody was wearing this, I'm wearing that. If everybody doing this, I'm doing that. So I never was the person that um, followed. I mean, of course you did follow and dumb stuff, but I'm talking about just the the genuine person that I am when I move. I always did something a little different, and I always try to think about things that could 
I could do here in Delaware that's not done. And that's just all it was, you know. Um, shout out to a lot of different women out here who are uh, into self-care movements. And they have their own, you know, they have their own here in Delaware. I've seen it, you know. I've seen it and I respect them and we talk about it. But um, soft girl air is just a little bit different. It's just a just a little tad bit different, and I did not see that here. And that's that's all it was. I didn't see it. And it was like it's time. We don't need to be the ones left behind. Facts. That listen. That that that's dope. Uh, I'm I'm here for it. So I gotta. I, I need to know. Uh, so who are your, your your soft girl influencers? Like 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 who influenced you to want to be that? Like 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 you know when you think of. Alicia Keys, I see a lot of that softness in her. Um, you know, coming from Harlem, she had to like rough it out, tough it out. She's a she. She was different, always different. Went a different path. Nobody was playing piano like that, you know. And then um, I've seen her change, like a softness come over her when you know through the years after she married um, Swiss. So I don't know what happened for her to change like her her ways and I think she's always kind of been a little soft but I think in the last couple of years I've seen like a shift so she reminds me of somebody that is a good example of what it goes from being tough or had to be tough to now a little softer and you still see the same Leisha Keys you know I, I still see her doing the same thing she's rocking the braids she's rocking the, the bamboo earrings all that type of stuff but I just see her demeanor changing a little bit and I've seen it um, I think another person is like um, Tracy Ellis Ross. Mm. She, she gives me that vibe that um, she has a softness about her. Privilege. She lived a privileged life, but I see that um, she knows how to. She the type that to me, um, she gonna she gonna slap you down or tear. She gonna get you where you need to be without cussing you out. You know what I'm saying? She's giving me that vibe when you see her. She is strong, but you can tell there's a softness there. Um, I'm gonna tell you who else I've seen. I'm like, okay, sis, Missy Elliott. Yeah, Matt lately, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, those are like good examples, I think, of women who um who we seen transition, like maybe not Tracy Ellis Ross, because I think she's always kind of been that way. But those two um are appearing to be they're they are comfortable in their skin and they are moving into like a softer era of themselves sure absolutely and, absolutely I'm, and, and here's what i think it was like been always soft like i can't think of nobody uh always 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 soft um that's a good one i gotta think about that one but I, those are the ones i'm thinking like transitional wise Random, but not so random. Was Clara Huxtable soft to you? Okay. Yes, yes. Yeah, she was. Yeah. She was in the in the older aspect. And to be honest with you, she she's still soft now. Yeah, I can see that. Her her character was definitely a part of her real life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yes. Yeah, because it's an energy, right? Like it's just it's energy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and here, and one one of my favorite things, right? And just because it's normally I don't normally acknowledge the comments, but I will. And it was said that a a a, a, a good man can bring out a woman's softness. Yeah. My theory is it can because it it can allow a woman who has been forced to be hard to now rely on someone else, right? Sometimes that guard can be up because some some these folks has been acting up, I don't trust them. So now I got to move this way because I don't trust nobody. Now I found somebody I can trust I can move in this way. My favorite part about your movement is it ain't about us. Yes, we will benefit. I will. I love soft girl. That I will benefit from all of this. Hey, <laughs> but okay, it's not about me. Like y'all doing that for y'all, which means it's going to sustain. If it's not about somebody else and it's really about kind of internal work, that's how things kind of is sustained in your own space, right? We got our own, we got to worry about. So like, 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 like y'all doing that for yourselves and building that building that muscle up for yourselves is just beautiful in its own way. So listen, I I, I commend that all the way. Yeah. Um, it's a, it's definitely important for men to allow give us give us the safe space to be soft. Absolutely, we yes, and allow allow that growth. With that said, what kind of advice would you give 
you know, a a, a, a female or a, a lady who don't who don't who was in certain situations and is so hard. Like, yo, I really don't want to be so hard all the time. Like, <laughs> the first thing I would think about is um, just pick one thing. Like for me, I just picked one thing, and that thing is still and was communication. There's it, the soft girl life that I've seen is it's so broad. Like I've seen so many so many memes and stuff about it, um, but it's so you can get lost in it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I when we did the photo shoot, we all had cards, and you should go back and read it. If you see the go back and see the video. If anybody's watching this video, go to. DE Soft Girl Air page, and there's a video of a photo shoot. And if you watch it all the way through, you will see us writing on cards at, closer to the end. And we all picked a word that we were going to be working on for our Soft Girl Air. Mine was communication. Somebody said unguarded. They want to be so. They want to be more unguarded, too guarded. So it's just. I think that's the one one thing you got to choose, and. If that one, take that one thing, and that's your journey. You know what I'm saying? I think that's the one thing that you could possibly do. If it is, um, if it's one thing, like, you know, if, I'm going to tell you one thing. Some of us walk too fast. We move in too fast, right? And uh, one of the things that I have learned that makes me move, too fast is because I'm running late. So, so which which then stresses me out, which then is you know is it's 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 unorganized. So how do I walk slower? I give myself a little bit more time um, so that I can walk slower, so that I'm not speeding through things. So if it's something as small as that, because I can feel myself and then I I can bring it down and pace myself because I'm not rushing I'm not looking at my watch I'm not late you know what I'm saying I'm, I'm I'm not like this I can slow it down so just if we can just pick one thing and just focus on that one thing that's the that's the that's the key for sure that makes a lot of sense in my opinion I think anxiety puts Ooh. us in situations where we have to be where we feel like mentally we got to be ready for something that ain't even happening yet so like, I can get why that moving fast and that running late create that anxiety and now you feeling like oh let me just bring it down so I'm not yes. even in space no more oh. so Whew. yep and it, and it, and I've seen like recently it's a guy I follow his name is Trail the Trainer or something like that um, he was in jail, and then he came out, got a business in Baltimore. I follow him. He's kind of living a soft man life. And I share him on, like, the story for Soft Girl Air Page. So it's it's about us and our movement. But I see men in, um, who's actually taking on that as well. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I got to – I ain't going to lie. I don't lie. I, I got to check it out. The terminology soft man. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> anyway, I feel like <laughs> – it could be, trying to live. It could be uh, whatever you know. It could be gentle giant life. I don't know. You know. Okay. Yeah. 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 We. 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 I, I could be. You know I mean? I could be gentle. Okay. <laughs> hey. That's all. Look. Wake up. Like. Mm, say something. All right. <laughs> um. Okay. But uh, and I don't know. So. So we talked so much about the, the the soft girl world and all of this, but you got some other things planning. The adult paint party and the. The, the, the paid to art situation for the youngins. Tell the world about some of the things you got coming up. All right. So aside from the soft girl era, if you're just coming on, uh, I own an art gallery downtown called the Soul from Art Gallery. And what me and Erica, which is Elise Art, Elise Art, she is the artist who I work with. I've been working with her for like the last year. And she is the artist for our adult paint nights. It's the best paint night and the adult paint night in Delaware. Like we get we get live in here. We get live in here and it, it only is exclusive to 10 people. We don't do big ones. And I tell you every time, G, every single time, as soon as it sell out, I'm getting emails, texts, calls, any more space, it's not. It's not. So the next one is, the first one of the year is next Saturday, um, 
February 11th at 7 p.m. Tickets are on the Soul Firm's website. It includes endless drinks. Um, we party in here. Or, you look at your face. <laughs> You said endless beverage, endless adult beverages. I want some libation, people. <laughs> <laughs> Need some spirit. Yes, yes, it get lit. Um, so it's all the supplies, endless drinks, music, our music that we love. The theme this time is Black Love. So I don't know what Erica got planned for us, but she far like I'm gonna show you. Um, I'm gonna show you two that she did. Hold on, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give you a little, give you a little preview. She get those ready. What y'all gonna see is so again when I post this on a YouTube joint, y'all gonna see Elise is a part is, is in the actual um soft girl video shoot, right? Boom! Oh, Biggie, yes, that might have been at the. So, we had mm, yeah, we can see that that's on fire. Erica, no. She did this one. This was one of our paint nights as well. So we're not just doing like regular paint nights. It's real art that you can put in your home. You That's me? a fact. Yeah, That's so fact. so the next one is Black Love. That's February 11th. Then I have the paint, um, I'm sorry, the art, the teen art space, which is at Route 9 Library. It is, I like planned it, built it, directed, put all this together, coordinated this curriculum. It's a 12-week program. I work with mm. artists James, and we teach 12 weeks of Four weeks of drawing, four weeks of painting, and four weeks of digital art. Teens ages from 13 to 18. Once they complete the program, they are paid. So it's a paid program. Yes. So a lot of these teens, they come in and we, we have an application process. I do the same thing as if they were going to basically come to a gallery. You know, they got to send like a couple portfolios. We have them ask some questions. Why do you know that? Why do you want to be a part of this? We are very respectful of the new generation of what's your pronoun, you know, so we're trying to make sure they're comfortable. Then we have, um, I speak a lot about business and current events in between James, you know, teaching them. We take them on a field trip to one of the museums. And then at the end, I curate an exhibit of all their artwork and they can sell whatever they want. And it's 100% of their commission. <laughs> right. So you're going to help, you're going to teach them how to get money. That's what you're doing. Exactly. Through art. So yeah. So last, last year was our first one. It starts and starts in April. The deadline for the application is March 7th. I have it up on the Soul Firm um, website uh, and on our, IG on our IG page. And I have parents in there like, oh, I have an 11-year-old. I'm sorry, but it's for, it starts at 13. We've had 20-year-olds saying, Can, you know, last year. Can I be? I'm like, it stops at 18. So everything is on the page um, for a parent to sign their child up. And the beautiful thing is that, you know, you, they'll, they'll be able to learn and then they will be able to get this money. And so this year, I'm going to invite somebody from DCAD because I feel like that's the next step, you know, to aspire to, you want to take this to college. You know, some people don't want to go to college, but there's courses that you could take that could probably better you at DCAD. I know I took some, you know, when I came back home. So, you know, trying to, trying to build those connections for these kids to go to the next step and be able to be professional. So once they get out into this world, it's just not... I'm just an artist. You know, you're an artist who has these to, you know, you can you have a resume, you you did this, you have something to take with you on to the next step. So that's you know, that's happening. And then also like I'm working with the Delaware Contemporary on um on a project and they have a they have a um a database. If you're an artist on here, go to the Delaware Contemporary's website. There is a um, uh, a database in there called Art Source. Get in there. Get your information in there because when I I'm cure I'm help I'm co-curating a show, and if you are what I'm looking for, what they're looking for, we're pulling from that database and seeing if you fit the criteria. But I can't pull you in if you fit the criteria if you're not in the database for them. Mm -hmm. You are artists. Tap into Art Source on the Delaware Contemporary site. I'm actually in there now, like picking artists for something that I'm working on. So that's the soul firm end of it. That's that's what's happening. Then July through September, Shante Young Williams has a solo exhibit. 
And in October through December, Erica Elize has her solo exhibit. So that's all I'm doing this year. Just I'm going crazy. I'm going to say that's all. You said like 50. You said you're going crazy. That's all you're doing this year, going crazy. That's what you're doing. She said, listen, I'm only doing 50 11 things. That's it. It's light work. <laughs> Uh, and, and I'm gonna tell you how I feel. I personally feel like they should have totally just let you sell that jewelry, cause now you empowering women. Like, like they, all they had to do was let you sell that jewelry. <laughs> but now you're going to be empowering people. See, they 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 did this. Okay, <laughs> this was never supposed to happen. Oh, they created a monster. They, they created a soft girl. Not even I can't say a monster. They done created a soft girl. Talk about it. <laughs> Listen. And, and 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 I just want to circle back because because I love that you said this right. Art source on the Delaware Contemporary website. The reason why I love, love that you said that is because things like me being a part of Delaware Music Network, we do different events, and sometimes people don't get. Well, how do I get a part of it? Why y'all ain't pick me? Why? And it'd be like, well, did you come to this? Like I, I'm quick to be like, deal. Just come to the open mic so people can see you perform, right? They're, and, and if they don't get into that art source, they're mad because other people got picked. But it's like, bro, your name, you didn't put your name in the hat. There was a hat. You said the hat is over here. Put your name in it. And now you mad because other people's got name got pulled. So I, I, I love that, y'all, that, 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 that you um, stated that. Now, and by the way, I, I do have to plug it, uh, especially because it's a soft girl episode. Uh, oddly Dope, I'm hosting that. That is on September, excuse me, that is on February 19th. Oddly Dope at uh, the Oddity Bar, it's going to be Mo Nicole, and it's going to be Wicked Divinity, which is a, a, a all-black burlesque show. That That's which people, right, right, okay? And and, and listen, I ain't going to lie to you. Blonde Rouge. It, it, right, they, they don't even realize that there are black burlesque shows, and there's an art to it, and it's not, just like, people don't get really where it goes to that, right? So we're going to have that. It's going to be a conversation. The stand is going to bring the food. Right, bow. So listen, be prepared. Get your grub on. Get your sip on. And I, listen, listen. And, and, and I'm gonna be there. She's gonna have some toys for the female. Y'all, 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 y'all. Kind of make some purposes. Take care of yourself. This ain't about us. <laughs> Take care of yourself. Yeah. Take care of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so, so listen. That's that's gonna be at the Oddity Bar on um, on February 19th. It's gonna be a vibe. Now, before I. I I get you up out of here. Oh, oh, then it's live at the Rockford Tavern. That's going to be at, uh, that's the third Friday. So that's going to be on the 17th, 17th and 19th. Yeah, boom. With that said, oh, and that's going to be Ty Mathis. I don't know if you know Ty Mathis, bring out the guitar. They get funky. Uh -oh. Now, yeah, no, nah, you got you got to see them. They, listen, it's a vibe, all right? But before I get up out of here and get you up out of here, I do this thing. You might have heard me do it. I don't know if you have. I tell people, give me a word, and I'm like, I give you a poem, and it's, it's a whole thing. So you can go ahead, okay? <laughs> just go toss me one or a phrase, don't matter to me. And then, I, you know, I do what I do. Okay. Um, delicate. Oh, okay. I see what you did there. I see what you did there. Okay. <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. <laughs> People don't handle with care like they're supposed to. <laughs> and what I, I mean, they don't handle it with care. You might ask me, well, handle what? Handle who? Honestly, you. Like, when I say that, they tend to move around as if you can't be fragile sometimes. Mm -mm, I'm not saying that you break easily. That's not what I mean with mine. What I mean is people don't realize that you're not trying to break at all, but you shouldn't have to worry about breaking off any parts of yourself. Especially not a piece of your heart, soul, spirit, or mind. Okay, I get it. Most people try to define you as a strong black woman. But the problem is that they get that mistook. Being a strong black woman doesn't mean you are made to lift every weight. <laughs> Being a strong black woman doesn't mean that you're made to build every dish and fix, fix every plate. See, I, I get People get confused with that and they don't realize that that can create a whole different mind state. <clears throat> That's when they seem to forget what comes with this experience. They don't realize that there's some drama, anxiety that tends to just sit that you got to live with because you're feeling like you physically got to fight through all of this. I get it. 
You're dealing with so much ignorance that people trying to tell you how to live through your own experience. <laughs> Imagine that. People trying to tell you how to live through your own experience. Meanwhile, they walking through without a scratch, scar, scrape, or a blemish. And they judging you for all your stitches. I guess they just don't get it. Fine. I'll say that if we remove them in due time, maybe it starts with our own state of mind. And this is when you seem to find that you can say, forget it. And when you start to admit it, mm, it's about the steps that you take. Screw what he said, because she walking with grace. <laughs> screw, screw what she said, because she got that same smile on her face. Screw, screw what they said, because all that drama about to be erased. See, this is when mm, all that hard grit that they told you you had to have to get where you're supposed to be, you realize you can get there just as easily being delicate. Oh. Oh! Yes. Are you recording this? You recording this, right? Yes. It is. yes. <laughs> you got to put that one in there, G. You got to put that one in there. That's fire. I also got to say, shout out to Shayna, which is Blue Tulip. Mm -hmm. Blue mm -hmm. Tulip is working on a photo shoot for a song she's creating called Ladies Night. And it has a soft girl air. It has soft girl air incorporated in it. Mm -hmm. So she is looking for women who would love to be in the photo shoot, the video shoot, for her to shoot this video. So that's fine. I'm glad. Fact. No, I was going to say, listen, if you ain't seen the Shane and Shane episode, I, I have Blue Tulip all here. We talked about the EP before it dropped. And on the Hats Off playlist that I told y'all to click the link <laughs> on, it's on YouTube, Title and Spotify. She owned it. She the first song. I don't know about love, but I know about tonight. Mm, mm, I do my shoulders like mm, whatever. Come on. Either way, <laughs> so so go out to the video shoot. Listen, get the information. Get Rock out. Give me a vibe. Video shoot. Get, get in it. Get in it. Enjoy that. Yes, yes. Mm. That was fire. Fire. But you all right, listen. So it ain't nothing. I, you know. I listen. I just be chilling. You gave me some energy. I just gave it to the world. You feel me? That's it. That's it. We just picking up gems and giving out energy. That's all. That's all this is. So, listen, I, I thank you for coming on. I, I truly appreciate every, all, all that, that we gave to the soft girl world. This is wild, man. Listen, I, don't, I stay out of women's business, but I listen, though. I do. I listen to women's business. <laughs> so, anything you want to say before we get up out of here? No, I just, I really just want um, what is happening. You know, just tap into, if you're a woman on this, on this show, Tap into figuring out a way to move a little softer in your life. It's going to make your life so much easier. If you're a man watching this, if you know, if you if the, if you have a daughter, a mother, a sister, a girl, and if you can give them any type of space to be softer, do it, do it, do it. Grow, call them. Uh, your 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 tank filled up. Pull up the wah wah. I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna take that load off you this week. Little stuff. So that's all I have to say. I'm, I'm gonna go over my sister right a little late, probably tomorrow. Take out the trash, just cause I ain't got to. <laughs> it's my sister though. I don't mind. You know what I'm saying? Tell her I, I want to take that load off of you. Watch how the energy change. We need that. Huh? Yeah. So listen again. I appreciate y'all coming out. You can coming out. By the way, next week it's the Delaware Music Network edition, so it's gonna be coming off of there. I'm gonna have everybody who, who's gonna be performing for the month, including Mona Cole, Wicked Divinity, and and all, just all the artists from last night. Top Mass. I'm gonna have all of them on it. And uh, then after that, I also I got Deliciously Dope. They're gonna be talking about the doula services. That's gonna be in two weeks from now. Listen, listen. We supporting Black women around here. You feel me? If you you, you bother, you not. You know what I mean? If you be saying it, I, don't really be, I ain't gonna go there. All right, y'all. So with that said, I'm G Dash Jones. This has been Hats Off, another wonderful episode with Nataki Oliver. Y'all have a great evening. I'll see y'all next Peace. week.